Things come up such as Mitty Grossman, risk taker, democratizing wellness, wanting WW to be everyone's partner in health, WW being a health and wellness company, and WW really trying to solve the paradox of health. You've run a lot of other companies, and I know we've talked about it, the brands, Nike, Ralph Lauren, uh, you've been involved in HSN, uh, of course. You've been at WW for about 17 months now, yeah, right in the shop. What's different about this brand and trying to make some changes, a lot of changes, versus kind of what you've done before? You know, on one hand, there are a lot of similarities to transformation, particularly of a legacy brand that has had such meaning to people for so many years. Um, and this idea of moving forward but retaining the beauty of that legacy and what the brands stand for. So there's similarities. The difference is that this is not an exercise in only a financial return on impact, although that is critical. The reality is if we accomplish what we believe we want to accomplish and what has to be accomplished, the return on human equity will be so powerful that it becomes not just the fact that we've got permission to be more in people's lives, we feel we have a responsibility to do what it is we're trying to do. And it goes back to the comment you made about solving the paradox. Um, and it really heightened to me. I was in Italy at the Global Wellness Summit, and they presented the white paper on how the global wellness economy has gone from 3.7 trillion to 4.2 trillion, and everybody was clapping. Uh, but the reality is there's not a single marker anywhere in the world that shows we're getting healthier. And if we do not do something, for example, today's millennial will be the most obese generation in history, and today's two-year-old has a better chance of not being healthy than being healthy. And then if you look at the gap in underserved communities, it's that much more dramatic. So as a culture and as an organization, you know, this evolution for us of not abdicating our position as the best healthy eating and weight loss program on the planet, because that's really important, but really giving people much more of an ecosystem to help them sustainably lead better lives and change that trajectory. And we're going to get into that, because you've got this platform, right, that has, it's multifaceted, and I know it's rolling out big time in 2019. I want to go back to, though, Googling you some more. The word purpose comes up a lot with Mindy, that every corporate decision is put through a purpose filter and that people crave purpose. So this underlines everything that you do. It seems, well, I think does it? not only does it underline everything we do, I think any brand today that does not truly believe that there has to be a purpose at their core and it has to be relevant for your brand, I think is going to have a challenge having long-term sustainable success because you want to attract talent. Uh, you want to retain talent. You want to create meaning with consumers. And you know I've spoken a lot how the brands of the future are going to have to marry technology plus meaning to help people lead more connected, fulfilled lives. Um, and I started writing on building uh, a culture of purpose. Um, and you have to define what that is for your brand. And you know, for, for our company, it's very obvious. Um, and so everyone that works there not only feels they have a job, but they really are having an impact on people's lives. And it really makes a very big difference, especially at our underlying you know, base. We're a technology platform company, mm -hmm. and we're in the same fight for talent that everybody else is. And that factor and that purpose factor, and even especially moving forward, is going to be very important. Well, I want to dig into that. I want to bring it in the audience and do a poll because that I love that idea of the purpose in attracting talent is really important. And we've had a lot of conversations here at Bloomberg about that for, uh, with other executives as well. So I want everybody to pull out their phones. I have a question. How well would you say your company's practices align with the values of millennial and Gen Z workers where the idea of purpose really plays big time? Uh, number one is perfect alignment. We're all over it. Aspirational. This is a priority for us, but we're not sure how effective our programs are. Ticking the box, we have a few programs in place. We're just getting started, and values alignment is not a priority for us. So as we wait for stuff to come in, and it looks like it's kind of a mixture between perfect alignment, aspirational. It's a priority. People are working towards it. 
your thoughts here? Because this is obviously yeah. a priority. I, I think more and more people are understanding it's a priority, but it's diff there's a difference between a priority and knowing how to put things in action. It's not a purpose statement on the wall. And, you know, when we came... We had that for years, Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, we did. <laughs> and when we came out with, you know, our new purpose, we inspire healthy habits for real life, for people, families, communities, the world, for everyone, an entire strategy then had to be built. And it had to be at the core of what we did. So every single person has to feel inherently that their job is attached to that. And we did create a purpose filter. There's a pad on every conference room. Every single person has it. And every decision we make, we put through that filter, whether we're hiring someone, whether we're deciding to have a partnership with someone. And we know partnerships are going to be important going forward. Every product we made. And you know, we made the decision, putting it through the purpose filter, we looked at the products we made. Now, you don't eat WW food, right? You can eat anything you want, which is the beauty of the program, but we do make food products like snacks and breakfast foods, et cetera. And we looked at our products and we said, these don't fit our new goal of what we want to be. And we made the decision to get out of every single product we sold that are artificial ingredients, preserved, et cetera, which frankly was pretty much every one. Um, and we said, we're willing to understand what the financial ramifications of that would be. And, you know, fortunately, but the main part of our business is recruitment and retention, but it was, you know, significant. But, part of it, right? but I, the team did an incredible job. And in January, every single product sold through our direct channels. And then on February 4th, our first full store, branded store opens on Amazon. It's 100% new products, new formulations, um, new packaging that represent what the brand is. But if we didn't have that purpose filter and we hadn't really believed in our purpose, somebody could have not made that decision. And in today's world, you have to, you have to make a choice. You have to make a choice. So, you know, you talk about partnerships and you really have done partnerships throughout your career with, di with different companies. What about that purpose filter applying to partnerships? It's really important. Yeah. So the first thing we really look at is how can one plus one equal three, right? Because any partnership that's stilted on one end or the other is never going to be a great partnership. Number two, are they aligned with our values? Number three, do they have the same goal and intent? And when I say goal and intent, if we partner, do they also want to share in the desire to inspire people to get healthier? Um, and is it, is it real and at the core? Um, and are we adding value to one another? And I've always said the best partnerships is when you negotiate and you finish whatever agreement you have and you put it in a draw and both parties do 10 times as much because they believe in what they're doing. And those truly are the best partnerships. Um, and we have some very unique partnerships. We have a partnership with MSC Cruises as the largest cruise right. line out of Europe, the WW Cruise. We just had sold out 1,000 people, week of wellness on the sea. Um, we're adding a cruise to Cuba next year. We're doing a cruise um, out of Europe. They have invested um, not just in our partnership, but in having our freestyle program and healthy living across their entire ship, even if we're only 1,000 people out of 5,000 people. You know, we just launched the first WW Freestyle Cafe at the Barclays Center, um, Healthy Mediterranean, and we have a food uh, choice at every other venue uh, in the arena because they want to bring healthy choices. Um, been a great partner, and there's, you know, many examples of that and you know that's the prism we're looking at the same with technology you know our partnership with headspace our partnership with aptive um you know w we have a benefit to them because we have this incredible subscriber base that's going to be exposed and we're creating value for our members by giving them great assets to surround them with this ecosystem of health um, but at the end of the day you really have to think about the longer term. Meaning what? People sometimes used to think of partnerships as how many dollars can I get or how can I use this in the short term. Um, but I think you have to enter into things in a different way and be very stringent on 
who you want to affiliate your brand with, right. particularly in today's environment. Um, I'm curious, too, because I know last year when we talked, I think at the end, I was like, what are the things that are on your mind? You talked about talent acquisition. And I know you are increasingly becoming a technology company and competing for those software engineers that everybody else wants. So tell me a little bit about that. That's still number one on your mind? Absolutely. Yeah. So what we've done over the course of the, the last year, first of all, table stakes is that there has to be exciting, interesting technology that people are working on, right? Um, and we're doing so many new things, and our brand has a different element of relevancy today. But we're really getting out there, and we are a techno technology platform experience company with this human-centric overlay. Um, last week, we just opened our new offices in San Francisco, and we're making sure our environment, and you know, we're attracting talent, and we have room to double our staff out there. Um, and so we did a big event out there and we'll continue to do that. Um, we've done a lot of work around us as an employer brand to get people to understand who we are today and recruiting on college campuses. But I would say the real important thing is culture and purpose married to exciting technology because it's a war for talent in these areas. Right. Um, but we're doing exciting things around everything from data to AI to the utilization of technology. And that's how the word of mouth is attracting. And then I'd say lastly, diversity. We have an unusually diverse technology and product team. And that attracts talent. They want to see where they're coming into, what the group looks like. Exactly. Um, it's interesting. You're, I, I want to stay with technology for a moment because I know this is really important to you. Um, you're reading a book, which I started looking into, and the title is Everybody Lies, Big Data, New Data, What the Internet Can Tell Us About Who We Really Are. It's fascinating. It's a data, data scientist who looked into yeah, anonymous, Seth Stevens Google, yeah. Yeah, Google, in anonymous Google searches. It's fascinating, the biasness and things that come across. Why are you reading it? You know, it's disturbing and provocative at the same time. But, you know, we're all in a world that we've started using this word data it's almost become trite how we're using it, right? Oh, we're going to use data, we're going to use technology, we're going to use AI. Um, we could not consume all the data in the world that we have. It's what data are you looking at? More important, what questions are you asking? And then where are you going to really decipher quantitatively and qualitatively to make decisions on behalf of who you're serving and what you want to provide. And the way we look at things is how do we use the data? How do we use the technology to create greater meaning, personalization, and all of that? Because it's too easy to say, oh, look what we can do. And I'm always sitting in the room going, well, what benefit is it going to provide? Right. And how did we look at that data? But if again, if you look at um, the book and the genesis of it, how Google Trends is being looked at, et cetera, um, you know, you have to go deep to really get the truth. And you have to understand what data you're looking at, um, what questions, again, as I said, that you're asking. Um, I would recommend everyone read the, the book. Well, it's interesting. If I could just point out, because it, it, it does things like it finds parents Google, is my daughter overweight roughly twice as frequently as they Google, is my son overweight? They Google two and a half more times more likely to ask, is my son gifted than is my daughter gifted? And there's a lot of- Oh, look, you see true bias on yeah. race. Right. Pornography. Right. Um, bias. Hate. And uh, you know it, that's why I said it's disturbing and provocative at the same time, but it's the world we live in. So how are we going to use all of this but for positive uh, impact on people? Personalization. You guys are at what, at over 4 million members now? Yeah, over 4.2. 4.2. Personalization, using that data in a smart way, it is, is that what It's going to be critical to our future. And the growth. And you know, I'll, I'll be honest, we, we built a team. Um, we're doing some really good work. We have a lot of work being done on voice right now. But we're still at the nation stages of where we can really be. So if you think about what drives our business, 80% of our business is recruitment and retention. 
Right now, our retention is, it's an all-time high, but it's the high nine months. And what I've said is I'd love to be talking about retention in years, not months. So how are we using the data to understand when people are struggling and how do we give them reinforcement and how do we know what's going to motivate them? How do we personalize their food choices or their activity choices? Or, um, you know, one of the things we just launched was something called Wellness Wins. It's our first rewards program in the history of the company. It does not reward you for spending money. It rewards you for the efforts you're taking on behalf of your health, whether that's tracking food, doing exercise. How can I use personalization to create personal challenges for yourself where you can get rewarded? Um, so those are all efforts that we're going to continue to invest in. And if you look at the investments we've made over the course of the last year, the last couple of years, they've been very, very, very focused on technology, both in talent, execution, et cetera. You know, talk to us a little bit about the platform that's going to really hit everybody in 2019. I feel like all your work has been leading up to what we're going to see in 2019. Yeah. Is that fair? Absolutely. Or a lot of your work? Absolutely. Yeah. So if you think of, you know, Jan, you know, December 2016, and you think of December 2017 going into 18, and now going into 19, what we are giving people for the same amount of money, right? The same investment. So the ecosystem. Number one is nutrition. So WW Freestyle, which launched in January of this year, the most effective program we've ever had. But it's the first time in clinical trials we, only, we just didn't measure weight. We measured weight, satisfaction, happiness. Um, and it's proving not only to be more effective, but people are losing more weight, but they are happier and more satisfied. We have our tech, patented technology barcode scanner, make it easy for everyone to know food. We are launching FitPoints 2.0, so taking the science of what we did in nutrition and applying it to fitness personalized. So it's giving people a recommendation around strength, intensity, and duration. Uh, we are about to launch uh, globally the integration of Aptive, which is audio fitness content that's being created exclusively for us. We already integrated Headspace, mm -hmm. content created exclusively for us. Um, and it'll be in multiple languages as well to give people the mindset support. We launch Wellness Wins. Um, I'm close to getting my first prize, so I'm very excited. Um, and Connect, which is our digital community that marries into our physical community, because of those 4.2 million members, 1.6 million still go to their weekly studios uh, and workshops. We do 30,000 a week. And now we're getting ready to launch. We launched in Canada. We're about to launch in the US, Connect Community. So you can self-identify within your community platform young moms, college students, right. men. And that's going to be very important for us as we look to diversify. So now think of what you had. You had a food program. And now you have nutrition, technology, fitness, mindset, motivation, and community all combined within the expression of the new brand content globally consistent. I've heard you say that you know, maybe you want to go to Amazon for shopping, Netflix for viewing, but you guys want to be the platform. Spotify for music and us for health and wellness. For health and wellness. Do you need kind of the healthcare industry? So I'm glad, I'm glad to, you to said that. To kind of jump in on that, because I know you guys have been looking yeah. at it. So we believe that is definitively both, let's call it healthcare as well as employer. So we currently have a health solutions business, but just like we've spent a lot of time relaunching our consumer business, we will be relaunching that business in the first quarter of 2019 to really provide um, the same ecosystem of support, but with a dashboard that really can help those businesses measure efficacy of you know, healthcare costs, uh, absenteeism, productivity, satisfaction. Um, and we think, and when we laid out our goals through the end of 2020, we, we said that here's what's gonna happen in 2018, 
will start the relaunch in 2019 of our B2B and health solutions business provider, et cetera. We'll also, we've also been doing a lot of work around the emerging markets. So we don't really currently play in Latin America and Asia with the exception of very small business in Brazil. We think it's an opportunity, but priority one was relaunch the brand in the markets we're in and have that trajectory and then enter new markets. And those were really the components. And then the last component was expand our products. So healthy kitchen, uh, uh, wellness, travel and hospitality, and wellness tech. So 2019, I'm watching the clock here. We have a minute left. I could sit here for an hour and talk with you. Um, but I'm just curious. So big launch for the company. It's going to be a big year. Right? It's going to be a big year. There. You've got a marketing campaign, I understand, coming out with Oprah. Yeah, it's actually our most comprehensive global uh, brand campaign that we've ever done in the history of the company. Uh, Oprah has been a great partner as we've been developing the strategies around the brand relaunch and the campaigns. Uh, we have two new influencers that we'll be announcing. You can announce your uh, None. <laughs> I want to keep you in suspense. I have a lot of people making great guesses. Or you could tell us the UK um, one. That They're really the represent <laughs> health and wellness uh, out of the UK and out of the US. Um, but most important is also really telling real stories. Real stories of people's why and how we've been such a partner in transforming people's lives. And that's what we aim to is do. Is that the most effective brand ambassador? I mean, it's hard to beat Oprah as a brand you, ambassador. You know, you know what? And more, we, but... we, we look at every market as a pyramid of ambassadors. At the base of the ambassadors are your evangelists whose lives have been transformed because of what you've provided. Then there's micro-influencers. Um, so that could be chefs in a particular category. It could be um, great body positivity bloggers. I mean, we're one of the biggest proponents of body positivity. What does healthy mean to you? And then, yeah, there's what we call celebrity. But just like our partners, we put that through our purpose filter. Do they want to inspire people to lead healthier lives through their actions? And it's not just people who need to lose weight. It's people who represent, I want to be healthier, or this is how I live my life. And what's interesting, we just did a body of qualitative work where we asked tens of thousands of people about their perspectives on health and wellness. And if you ask that amount of people, would you like to lead a healthier life? Pretty much they're all going to say yes. You ask them what's the first thing you need to do, over 70% say lose weight or eat better. So we know that we're not going to give up our science of so many years of bringing the best program on the planet, but we know people need more to have it be sustainable. And we know that people want inspiration, not just information. And that's what we're trying to give them.